Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of TSEPs and Fast Films. I want to talk to you about the proper art requirements for TSEPs. Now, one of the harder concepts to grasp is that to run the program and make separations that work on both light and dark shirts, you really need two versions of the artwork. These need to be identical for the graphic, but the background, ca called the canvas in Photoshop, the background needs to be different. And so if you're going to run a design for light and dark shirts, you just must have two versions. Now, typically the customer doesn't know that. He gives you a piece of artwork that looks like that, and he assumes that you know what to do with it. The problem is, is that you run this design for black shirts, the program has no idea that white isn't a color, so it's going to look for your design, and if you leave a design like this and you try and separate it for a black shirt, TSEPs will put a block of white around the design because TSEPs says that that's the artwork and that's the way I see it. And the same thing for a black shirt. If you're going to put this design on a white shirt, TSEP says, well, I don't see just the basketball. I see what's around it, and that's black, and that's going to be black ink. And so we just have to have two versions of the art. Now, if you're going to put designs only on light shirts, only on shirts where there will be no underbase and no highlight ink colors, then you can use just a single version of artwork that has white in the canvas area. And conversely, if you're going to put a design on black shirts only, where we're not going to be printing black ink, where we're going to be using the shirt as the black color, and I mean black shirts, not a navy blue shirt, but a black shirt, then we could use a piece of artwork that has black in the canvas area. And so these are concepts that are important that you must understand. And if you don't quite get it, don't worry about it and just kind of buy into the fact that you need two pieces of artwork. Let me talk to you right now about how we prepare the artwork for this. Let's start off with a simple design like this that has a fairly hard edge. And hard edge meaning it's not vignette, it doesn't, doesn't gradate out to nothing. This has a fairly hard edge. It's a simple matter in Photoshop of clicking on the magic wand tool and checking, first of all, the tolerance. Now, tolerance is if we click on the magic wand tool in white, how many levels of white will it see? When will it start to actually find the oranges? And right now, this is a very nice design because it has a white background and a very hard edge and orange as the color. We'll leave the tolerance set for 32. That's the default tolerance setting in Photoshop. And we're just going to click. Now, if we have the basketball not touching anywhere, the magic wand is going to select entirely around the design. So it's going to select up against the basketball and the entire background area. Now, it's a simple matter in Photoshop of filling this with black ink, keeping in mind that we must be working on a dupe of the file. We want to have a version of the artwork with white ink. That'll be the original, and we should be working on a duplicate of that file to make this black version. So we'll end up with two different versions of artwork. Now, we could go to the foreground and background colors on the toolbar, and the default setting is white foreground, black background. We could change these. And if this has a color in it already from Color Picker, we don't worry about it. We just go right to the little default button right there. Click on that. I want to have the foreground color be white, the background color be black. If we delete a selection in Photoshop, Photoshop fills that selection. This is a selection with the marching ants, the little moving ants around here. If we delete the selection by pressing the delete key, Photoshop fills this with the background color. Press the delete key. Now we take off the marching ants by going doing a control D or an option D on Mac, and there we have the masked version. And we obviously have the original version, which has white around it. That is how simple we create a mask using the magic wand tool. Now, it's harder using the magic wand for a piece of art like this. This has some very ragged edges, and some of the edges are not dead white. We could click on the magic wand tool and click on dead white areas, and we see that we'll select a good part of our design. Now, if we press the delete key on the keyboard, making sure that the background color is set for black, it fills part of it. I'm going to do a Control D on the PC, Option D on the, on the Mac to remove the marching ants, deselect them, but we still have these areas through here. If I wanted to fill in these areas, I could zoom in and get a closer view and click on the magic wand, hold down the shift key to add to my selection, shift key held down, click, 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 click. You get a little carried away with this and then press delete on the keyboard and it fills those with black. Do a Control-D to deselect the marching ants, and there we have it. 
So it's harder when the edge is softer. Now, what's really hard using this method is where it's a vignetted edge, where the edge is soft and there's not a really a hard edge. And we can use Magic Wand, but we also have a lot of white areas that go into our design. We want this to be part of the artwork, but the outside canvas area to be filled with black. So this is more difficult using this method. I can click on Magic Wand, and I can click, and you can see that our problem is it went inside the design. If we press Delete now, all of this turns to black inside the design. Let's take off the marching ants. This is where changing tolerance can help. I can change the tolerance down to, let's say, 5. That means within 5 pixels of white, it will stop. Now, let's click again. Now, it's better. It didn't go in here because it stopped. It did go in here a little bit. Let's make the tolerance 1, and we'll click on white. You have to play around sometimes. Well, it went inside. I could probably live with that. And now if I press delete on the keyboard, delete... It fills it with black. Now we could pick up the eraser tool and erase to black. We could pick up the paintbrush tool, and we could paintbrush this in black. But the problem is we have a hard edge. This may be okay, but this is going to give us a fairly hard edge, and it would be nice to have this kind of vignette off into the shirt color. Let's try one more thing with the magic wand. We've got our selection going, but we'd like to have the selection expand into the image somewhat. Let's go to the select pull-down menu. And we're going to come down to Modify. Now, in earlier versions of Photoshop, these selections are not under the Modify menu. They're just under the Select menu. We can come down to Expand. We can, ex say, expand our selection by 10 pixels. And do that. You can see how it's changed the selection. And now, again, the background color is set for black. We press the Delete key on the keyboard. And we can see that if we take the marching ants off, now the edge is not quite. It's a hard edge, but it doesn't have white around it. It's not glowing. Now, it wouldn't be uncommon at this point to take the Soften, the Blur tool, and take some artists and blur these edges just to soften them because you really want to have it be a little softer edge, not such an abrupt edge, because T-Seps will separate what it sees, and we're just kind of softening the edges. By the way, we have areas down here that we still have to continue on with. You have to click on the magic wand, select in here. Tolerance is too low. I didn't like that. Let's make it 5. Select in here. Here, hold on the shift key and select, shift key and select, and press the delete key on the keyboard. So you can see that for designs like this, it's much harder to make the black version or the masked version. Now, if you can see the files that are on my hard disk, you can see that I have two versions of every piece of artwork. I call them sometimes black, sometimes white. I call them unmasked masks. Some of them are Photoshop files, some of them are JPEG files. Some of them are EPSs, some of them are TIFFs. You can use really any file format that Photoshop will open. But in most cases, there's two versions of the artwork, unless the artwork is going to go only on a black shirt. A good example of this is this piece of artwork is only going on a black shirt, so this piece of artwork is ready to go. The more preferred method for creating two versions of the artwork is to get the artwork in layers from the customer. This isn't always possible, but if you build the artwork yourself, then you have it in layers, hopefully. And this motorcycle design was built in layers, and we take off the background. And this is covered in the Photoshop training video. Build it in layers. And when all said and done, we create two different backgrounds. We create one version with a black background, one version with a white background. As an example, I can come to the pull-down menu, and it fell off the screen, the actual menu, but you can say make a new layer. And let's bring this layer down to the bottom. And let's click on this layer, and we'll go to Edit, Fill, and we'll fill the layer with white. And there I have my design with white. Now, this design was done designed mainly for a black shirt so that we didn't worry about the hard edge here. I would actually, if I was going to go on a light shirt with this design, I would come into this, I would come to my, uh, my blur tool, and I would blur that. And because I'm on that layer, that's all that's blurring. I'm not blurring the motorcycle. I would probably soften that like that. The design is built. It's on a white background. I would duplicate this file, image, duplicate, and I will flatten this file. Click on the horizontal arrow down here. Come down to flatten image. Discard the hidden layer, which is the black layer. And there's my version of the artwork that is flattened. It's RGB, and it's ready to separate. I will close this out, but I would save it, of course. And I will take the version that has the layers. I will turn on the black layer, turn off the white layer, and once again, flatten the image. 
and there's the version of artwork with black around it or black in the canvas area. I've easily created two versions of the artwork by working in the layers palette in Photoshop. Now, if you build the image in Corel or Illustrator as a vector image, and of course, you may be thinking you could separate from those programs, but frankly, TSEPS has a great job of separating images with lots of colors and lots of gradations. I'm in Corel Draw X3 here, and this is a vector-based file built out of clip art. If you group the images, the objects, and then go to File, Export, and export just the selection as an EPS file, you can bring it into Photoshop on a layer and make the black and white background layers. The other option is you can bring up a rectangle, fill it with black, put it behind the image, and save the file, remove the rectangle, save the file, and now you have two versions of the artwork.